Good morning. My name is David. Welcome to week 49 of 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. This is a one-year spiritual challenge where we go to worship at a different church each week. So we're getting towards the end. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see how this all finishes out. This past weekend, I drove out to St. Louis, Missouri to attend the Old Cathedral. This is also named the Basilica of St. Louis, King of France to understand who in the world is St. Louis? And I was doing a little research this last week and learned that King Louis IX, this 13th century French king, he may have one of the most interesting Christian or Catholic uh, backstories to put your faith in action than anyone I've ever heard before. So when I did the first 52 churches in 52 weeks, I drove out to New Orleans to attend the St. Louis Cathedral. This was out by the French Quarter. And like the, the church building itself, it's one of the most beautiful, most breathtaking, stunning churches that you can ever see from outside. Uh, inside, like I wasn't wowed compared to others I've seen, but I just remember the, the name of it kind of left me a little befuddled because with St. Louis, I'm thinking the city in Missouri, but then also with the, the name of it, I'm so used to, um, you know, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. John, uh, you know, these, these figures in the Bible uh, that had such an impact. Like, why would you name it after a king in France? I was so confused about that. Well, as I was doing this new 52 and 52, for week 21, I was out in St. Louis and I was running around the Gateway Arch and I'm just amazed by this national park. So there's no buildings other than the arch, but then you see off in the distance over this hill, this cross pointing up and it was a church. It was the only building that was on this riverfront. And this past week I was looking at this and it was called the Old Bas Cathedral. It was named also after St. Louis with the city also being named St. Louis. So it's like, who is this guy? Like what happened with this? And with St. Louis, the city, it was named after this French king just due to what he did for the poor, what he did for the needy, how he put his Catholic faith into action. So this past weekend, uh, attended Mass at the Old Cathedral. Uh, I'll show uh, a few sights and sounds from inside, and then I'll be back in a moment to expand a little bit more on who the King Louis IX was. Oof, did that sound good? Before I get into St. Louis, King of France, I want to mention real briefly a little bit about this Mass and one of my prior videos that was titled Protestant Attends Catholic Mass. With these visits, I try to remain as respectful and unbiased as possible. However, I'm human. I make mistakes. I'm flawed. And from that video, I got a fair amount of kickback from my Catholic brothers and sisters in Christ surrounding my comments made about the Eucharist. Like I wasn't understanding the sacredness enough, the consecration, uh, the importance of the elements turning into the actual body and blood of Christ. It's a fair point. And ever since I've been trying to understand uh, the Catholic faith uh, a little bit better and have a fresh perspective. Well, of all the people uh, that has kind of changed my tune a bit was Shia LaBeouf. 
So he did an interview with Bishop Robert Barron, uh, who's fascinating to listen to with Bishop Barron. Uh, he's done some interviews with Jordan Peterson, if you ever want to listen to those. But Shia LaBeouf, this Transformers actor who was on the outs with Hollywood, he got this new role to play a Catholic padre, and his insights paralleling his acting into the acting, the performance, the immersive experience that one may have with Mass, with Latin Mass, was some of the most powerful insights in the Catholic faith I had ever heard in my life. The way that Bishop Barron also kind of portrayed it is when the, the fathers, when the priests walk into the church, they're holding up the Bible, they're holding up the Word, the Word made flesh. And as the service continues, there's all these different prescribed gestures. There's the incense. It is a almost a reenactment of Jesus Christ's life. So in the beginning, the priests, they're kind of quiet. It's kind of like Jesus. He was kind of quiet in the first 30 years of his life. But then you have the homily. Then you have the preaching. And then essentially, everyone's preparing for the Lord's Supper. And you kind of see, again, more gestures, more movements. And it becomes this, if done really, really well, as Shia LaBeouf said, this immersive experience. So for the first time, like I'm watching this mass uh, with the choir, with the lady that was singing above, just very angelic. Like I'm, tr I'm getting a little bit new of an angle, a different type of perspective, a new appreciation for Catholic mass. I'm not there all yet, but this was kind of one of the first times where I put down my sword, I stopped thinking about all the criticism and the biases, and I just observed and I enjoyed it. So how did King Louis IX go from a king into a saint? Oftentimes when you think about royalty and riches, you often think about that Bible passage of a camel getting through the eye of a needle. But with Louis IX, he became king at the age of 12. He was a boy king. And he eventually, he bound himself to be God's anointed. And I'm sure probably a lot of kings probably said the same thing. But he was devoted to his people and especially his Catholic faith. So he founded hospitals. He would help those that were sick, even those that had leprosy. Uh, he united France, especially it didn't matter if you're a peasant or a lord. He found different type of ways to reform the justice system and legal reform. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, back in those days, uh, you were kind of presumed guilty, but he kind of introduced, uh, you weren't, uh, you had to be innocent first until proven guilty. And one of the things that was probably the, the most interesting stories is despite his vast wealth, he would invite 13 poor people into his palace to eat with them. And oftentimes he'd even serve the poor in person outside his palace as well. So the popularity of King Louis IX grew immensely, uh, especially with France during those Middle Ages. What, the only drawback I, I hear about this is he didn't exactly have much success when it came to leading crusades. So he led the Seventh Crusade against uh, some of the Muslim dynasties at that time. And in that crusade in Egypt, his, he lost his army. He got captured and had to negotiate his release for what now would be worth $80 million. And I guess about 18 years later, he led the Eighth Crusade in Tunisia. And that didn't go so well either. Uh, my understanding is his, like a plague swept through his army. And he died of uh, fatal diarrhea. So I hope you're not eating when I just said that. The legacy of St. Louis, King of France, grew immensely. And especially when the French started colonizing the Americas, two French fur traders found St. Louis in 1764 and named it after St. Louis. Well, one of their very first things that they did is they designated a plot of land devoted for the Catholic Church. So that's when they started building what is now considered the Old Cathedral. For a while, it was the only parish, the only cathedral, the only faith in St. Louis for about the first 45 to 50 years of St. Louis's existence. Well, as time progressed, the city got bigger. And eventually, uh, plans were made for the Gateway Arch 
uh, that overlooked St. Louis. And the development required a raising of many of the buildings that were on the St. Louis Riverfront. The only one that remained was the old cathedral just due to the historical significance to the city and what the Catholic faith brought to it. A lot of the parishioners, they moved out. They went to other type of Catholic churches. So the current old cathedral, it doesn't have a whole lot of attendance. Um, and I found out really quickly why. Because it's not too far away from Bush Stadium, the home of the St. Louis Cardinals. So when I was parking, I had to get a parking pass and pay $15 just to attend this church in their parking lot because parking is so hard to come by. So I can't imagine like many people want to pay that to attend service all the time. But at the same time, this is a huge tourist destination for many Catholics, especially for weddings, because if you have that church right next to the arch, uh, you know, you're going to have some great pictures from that. Uh, but m one thing that I heard is, you know, we may be few in number, but we're strong in loyalty. And after attending the old cathedral, kind of seeing those that were part of this church, I can understand why. We're going to wrap it on that. Hope you enjoyed this week's visit to the old cathedral. Next week is week 50. We only have three visits left. So I have a few ideas where to go. You'll want to stay tuned. So make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date. But until next time, hope you have a good one.